Hi everyone, I'm Shauna and welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be an empties video. I am going to be talking about all the products I finished in the first quarter of the year, the first three months. We do have a really good mix of like skin and hair care and as well as makeup. I finished a lot more makeup than I realized. So let's let's just get into the video. I'm going to start with the non-makeup stuff first and then we will go to the makeup stuff second. The first thing I want to talk about is the shampoo conditioner duo. I got this back I'm pretty sure in 2019. I was experiencing some dandruff and I was one of those immediacy kind of things like I needed some kind of dandruff control product like now. <laughs> And so I went to my drugstore, like I went that day, well not my drugstore, I went to the grocery store and I checked out all the products that they have and it was basically like head and shoulders or this. Those were my only options. So I decided to try this Dove combo. Now I have oily, I almost said oily skin. I have um, an oily scalp and I wouldn't say dry ends, but it's not as oily on the ends as it is on the scalp. This was too moisturizing for me, but at the same time, I still felt like I needed that dandruff kind of product. And I feel a little bit torn about this. I guess, okay, no. I guess I, no. I wouldn't repurchase this because it was too hydrating. I don't really know what to use because basically every dandruff product is made for people with dry scalps and not oily scalps and I'm not quite sure how I can have an oily scalp but also have dandruff. So one of the things I started doing was exfoliating my scalp and I think that's just the biggest reason or the biggest help and more helpful and more in line with my hair type than these two products. So I definitely wouldn't repurchase and it took me a long time to use these like literally two years because I don't use them the full year. I just use them like basically in the winter, maybe in the fall as well. I'm happy to, you know, have these out and sometimes I get sick of just seeing the same things in my shower and I did like the scent of it, but it was just, it was too moisturizing and I knew that every time I used it. So these guys are done and I'm pretty happy about that. The next things I want to talk about is this Clinique set that I bought in the winter Sephora VIB sale. I kind of panicked and I was experiencing some really bad acne and I had some good experiences with these products in the past so I decided to pick these up to help with the acne. It was a, it was a, it was a kit. It had this acne solutions cleansing foam, this dramatically different gel moisturizer and then this acne solution uh, clinical clearing gel. I would not recommend this set to anybody. Everything is just so so drying. This is too drying to use on its own morning or night and whenever I use this I had to put an oil on top. It, it's one of those products that makes your skin feel tight and that's just not enjoyable for me. The clearing gel also super drying and I would rather use Benzagel, which is something my dermatologist recommended for me back in the day and something that does consistently work for me. This like it is this does have salicylic acid but it is so drying and not really a joy to use. While Benzagel is also somewhat drying, it's much less so than this. And then the cleansing foam, this, when you put it on, like it feels dry. Even when your skin is wet, the product itself feels kind of dry. And all of, like all of these together makes for or creates a formula to really just dry out your skin. So I basically couldn't use these things together. Um, and if I did, it was like major oils with this guy. And even when I used an oil with this, to then use this first followed by the moisturizer was just, it was a lot. And this didn't really feel like it was cleaning my skin. I could not use this if I wore makeup. This was basically only for when I had no makeup on and it was like a no makeup day. So either in the morning or in the night when I did not have 
makeup on that day. This is too drying to use morning and night, so it was just like a once a day kind of product. And that's definitely not what the company recommends, but they probably want you to use it faster, so they tell you to do it morning and night. Either way, I don't like this product, I don't like this formula, and this, after using this one, and another kind of uh, foaming product after this made me realize I don't like foaming cleansers. They're not for me. They don't really feel like they're cleaning your skin. I don't need my skin to feel stripped or like squeaky clean, but this just doesn't feel like it's doing a job and foams just kind of feel dry. I think you actually get more cleansing and cleaning of the skin, removing the makeup from like creamy or gel products. So I learned my lesson with this and I would not recommend it, did not like this at all. The other skincare product um, is this. This is the Derma E Vitamin C Brightening, Daily Brightening Cleanser. This was okay. And here's what I realized with cleansers. I purchased Derma E a couple of their products a few months ago because they felt like the drugstore kind of sustainable kind of clean brand the brand that's doing a lot of good things at the drugstore because when you look at their products they tend to have like certifications like this one has wind energy certifications and they also i've seen other ones on different products but derma e is actually kind of expensive their moisturizers are on 50 dollars canadian and these cleansing products generally start in the $20 range. You can get them a little bit cheaper on sale. I think I got this just slightly under $20 um, when they were on sale on well.ca. But um, I, I just, I don't know if I can justify the price of Derma E for a cleanser like this because it was just so average and it's kind of expensive. So one of the things that I would prefer with this kind of cleanser would be something like simple and kind of honestly cheap because you wash it off and I have used a ton of cleansers now. I don't really notice a difference from cleanser to cleanser. I like some formulas like I don't like the foam so other than that there's no real difference. My favorite cleanser which does stand out by like a landslide is the herbivore bar soap like facial cleanser and that one is good for out of the shower but when I'm in the shower I don't like to use bar cleansers for the face. I just I find it difficult to justify $20 for a product like this that I don't really see a difference in you know if the cleanser is $10 versus $30. So I don't think this is worth its price tag. It did not feel or appear brightening, didn't really do a lot for my skin, but I'm also not really sure what cleanser will because it's a wash off product. I also wouldn't buy this because of the pump. So in preparation for this video when I was thinking about this product and the other ones in my collection, I decided to make the commitment to not buy products with a pump. Pumps are not recyclable, I've talked about that a lot on this channel. I have often justified buying a product with the pump from a brand like Derma E as an example because I feel like the brand is doing more sustainable things. But it's completely plastic and then they have a pump which I can't recycle. So no matter what, even if it's from the drugstore, a brand that has a product like this, I know it's not a cleanser. A squeezy tube is more sustainable than a product with a pump. And most brands, even anybody saying that they're doing clean beauty or clean skincare, are still often using plastic. So I'm not gonna buy pumps and I already know what my favorite cleanser is you know, for out of the shower. And I'm just gonna stick with that. I know it works and I need to just kind of stop screwing around and buying all these different kinds of cleansers. I did want something different for the shower, which is why you know, I have kind of experimented a little bit more, but um, I'm just kind of gonna go with something cheap and I don't need a $30 shower cleanser. On, or speaking of Derma E, I also used their eye cream. It's just called the Hydrating Eye Cream. This was okay, like literally middle of the road okay. I'm currently using one by the Inky List, which I love, like I actually, really really like. I've only been using it for a few days maybe maybe around a week 
and I like that significantly more than this one. I don't have particularly dry under eyes, but this just kind of didn't feel like it was doing enough, so I wouldn't repurchase this. The last skincare product is this Pie Rose Hip uh, Oil. It's a Rose Hip Bio Regenerate Oil. It was 30 mils. I really like this. Sorry, no, I love this. I really, really love the rose hip oil. The smell definitely takes a little bit of getting used to, but that's not pie. That's just the rose hip seed oil. This was more on the expensive side, and I don't know if I would repurchase this particular brand's rose hip seed oil, but I love this so much that I do want to repurchase a, a rose hip oil in the future. I'm currently working on a different um, oil, so once that's gone, then I will repurchase a rosehip oil. So, so stay tuned to see which one that I do get. This was so, so lovely. And this was almost full at the beginning of the year. And I was so shocked that I finished this when I had an oil in my project pan, which I also finished. I also was using this and I was using, um, I don't know, what it's what it's called but it's in a blue bottle and I just couldn't believe that despite focusing on other things I love this enough to use it up without trying to paint it so that really speaks volumes and I have been missing this I really like the consistency of this and and the texture of this and the way it makes my skin look and feel I just love it and I literally cannot wait to get this into my collection and I have to like I'm really holding myself back from not purchasing or repurchasing one. The only body care item in here is this body moisturizer. This is by The Body Shop. It's in the Moringa scent. She's finished. I really, really, I really like this smell. It's one of my favorites from The Body Shop. However, I did talk about this last year because I finished a different one up. I really like the scents that the Body Shop brings, but I don't really like how fragrant they are. And this in particular just feels really oily, greasy. So I probably wouldn't repurchase this as a body moisturizer. The very last non-makeup item is this. It's the Native Deodorant in Pumpkin Spice. This smelled okay. I'm not Actually, it smells pretty pumpkin spicy. I was about to say it doesn't, but I guess when you put it on your underarms and then you go about your day, you don't quite smell it. I did like this scent, um, and I bought it in a three-pack that I was supposed to share with my mom, but she didn't end up liking it, so I kept them all. Native, I've heard so much about, and I've mostly seen them being raved about in sponsored videos. and. But with Native in particular, I've seen so many sponsorships from so many different kinds of channels over the last year. And it was honestly the reason why I purchased this in the first place. Um, because I kind of felt like if there's so many people who are talking about this and who say that they love this product, they can't be all wrong. Like it must actually be good. I am here to tell you that my opinion of this is that it is a very solid middle of the road deodorant. Uh, I'm currently work I'm currently working on the coconut vanilla one and I was wondering if it maybe changes by scent like with the Schmitz one not every scent works the same or is the same. So I'm very curious to try this in the summertime because the Schmitz deodorant in the summer creates cracks in my underarms where they peel and crack and bleed and it's absolutely painful. So I am going to try this in the summer and I'm, I'm very curious about it. I don't think this is excellent or all that good and they are very expensive for a deodorant. I did see them come to Shoppers Drug Mart recently. I saw them in store and online and they're the only place in Canada where you can buy them. They retail regular price for $18.99 for a deodorant. I think that's absolutely wild. $18.99 for a deodorant. I don't think this is worth $18.99. I didn't pay that for this. I got that deal where it was like $30 for three, so they're about $10-ish. 
um, probably a little bit more with um, a conversion. I can't remember if I paid, paid in Canadian or USD. Either way, once all my native deodorants run out, I will not repurchase them because they're just okay. And I can't justify the price for them and I like the Schmidt's deodorants better, honestly. So disappointed in this. But I do want to say they are usable. I don't want to say I hate them because I don't. They're just middle of the road. Now let's get to the makeup. I finished three mascaras in this period. It wasn't as though I went through one mascara a month. I was using these in 2020 and then this one I think was one of the new ones this year. Either way, the MAC um, mascara, which is the In Dimension Extreme Lash. No, in extreme, in extreme dimension lash. I love this with the capital L, and I would definitely get this as a free sample. Point perk, really truly loved it. I've even been considering getting this full price, but before doing that, I want to try out again the L'Oreal telescopic lash that used to be my favorite mascara in college, but I haven't used it in probably four years. And I think that that would be similar to this one. They have very, very similar brushes. Okay, I can't get it to focus on this one. Love this. This one was a favorite um, that I tried. These two, the um, Laura Mercier Caviar Volume and then the Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir Mascara. These were both okay. Would not repurchase. Would not even get a sample. Not a huge fan. The next thing that I finished um, was the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. This was a mini and I did take the stopper out. I panned it. I went quicker than I expected and this was just okay. I would not purchase the full size from this even if I was supporting Hourglass. Just mediocre. Loose powders are never my favorite powder application or powder product so for me to purchase one or purchase a full size, it kind of has to be out of this world, and this just wasn't it. Let's talk about Quo for a second. This is the eyebrow pencil. It's the Ultra Precise Brow Pencil in Auburn. I really, really, really love this. I think I'm going to actually review Quo as a brand just based on the products that I use and have tried, um, because everything I've liked from them has been really good in all honesty, and they have the most extensive brow line at the drugstore, like that you can physically go into the drugstore and get. And they're one of the only lines at the drugstore that does produce Auburn pencils. And even when it comes to like black shades, um, a lot of brands, at least from what I've seen, like will do like a dark brown, but not a, good, not a true black. And I do believe they have that. This is a really, really nice pencil, and if I was ever in need of an eyebrow pencil, this would be the brand that I would go for. However, the reason why I bought this was because I had colored my hair and I was testing out this shade to see if I wanted to get it in a more lasting product, like a pomade or a, a like a, why am I blanking on the word? A gel, like an eyebrow gel. So this was a test for the color and I also wasn't sure at the time how long I was going to have my hair that color. So I love this so much. I brought, I bought the brow gel. So that's why I purchased this. And in general, I'm not buying eyebrow, eyebrow pencils from anywhere. And I hadn't used this in a while. And a few weeks ago, um, I started receiving a lot of comments of people talking about how good my eyebrows looked. And I'm pretty sure it's because I was using this in combination with with a brow gel. It was the Essence brow gel. I don't like that color or that formula and I really want that to go. But I think it was that combination that made my brows really stand out and look nice. So I wouldn't repurchase this because I'm not buying eyebrow pencils. But if I were, this would for sure be the one I would purchase. Next up is the First Aid Beauty Pores Be Gone Primer. I've been working on this for a year and I finished this in my most recent Project Pan update. I thought about cutting it open. One of you left that comment on my um, 
on my video and I have cut open products before uh, you saw one previously in this video I just don't love this enough to cut it open this as I have kind of said in that video but you may not have watched my project pan videos and you may just be here for the uh, the empties video this is called the pores be gone matte primer oil free this is just like a moisturizer it is not mattifying whatsoever and I wouldn't it's just not what it says that it is so I was very surprised about this product and I could just use this without any moisturizer underneath that's how moisturizing it is so I didn't really love this I mean I didn't hate it but I didn't love it and I would not repurchase this that's that on that <laughs> I'm just happy to finally finally have this out and to start working on something else one of the first makeup products I finished this year was the elf camo concealer this is in the shade medium sand and the shade range on this like the names are so weird there's I mean, a little bit of the there's a little bit of the product on there as you can see I'm pretty fair and I should never be using the medium color on anything the fact that this range runs so light is just weird but with that said um, you can still find your shade you just I guess have to go up more or further in the line um, this is my favorite face concealer I prefer this for the face than for the under eyes. I do have one more color left, which is really fair. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I may bust it out next winter um, as an under eye concealer or maybe to mix it with something else. I'm, again, not sure. I wouldn't use it on the face because it's too light. It's too light. And I do have a couple other concealers that I'm working through that I'm also using for the face. So I wouldn't repurchase this right now but I can definitely see myself doing that in the future. The last complexion product that I finished is the, Crit the Catrice HD Liquid Coverage Foundation. This was my favorite foundation for a couple of years. Um, I am no longer supporting Catrice or at the very least taking a step back from that from the brand. They did expand the shade range since I purchased this product so this was only available in four or five shades when I purchased it. Uh, I think in 2019 and they now since have 20 which I'm very pleased that Catrice uh, has done so and Catrice I actually saw recently has now come in stores into Shoppers Drug Mart so that's also nice to be able to shade match yourself they don't have all 20 but um, you can kind of get an idea this product after trying the MAC foundation is no longer my favorite foundation. The MAC one is just better. I think this one is more matte so I like combining the two um, and it gives me the perfect color but also just a little bit more mattifying than the uh, MAC one is on its own. The MAC, the MAC one, the color of the MAC foundation is way too yellow so I've been struggling with that a bit but it has you know better coverage and it does also have SPF that this does not although it's not very high so this is no longer my favorite foundation and in all honesty um I bought this because of Jacqueline Levine who doesn't really upload anymore but I really loved her channel when she did upload and she raved about this product and she also said that it was a dupe for the Fenty foundation. So once I finish a couple more foundations, I'm gonna buy the Fenty one. And if people are saying she's not the only one who have heard made that remark or comparison, I would rather try the Fenty one that also has a better shade range. And I feel confident if people are making that comparison um, that I will like it. So I am excited about it but I can also wait a little bit to to make that purchase. The next makeup product that I finished and I'm kind of kicking myself because I finished this product the day after filming my most recent project pan video and that is the Colourpop bronzer. This guy is completely done and what I'm gonna do is um, I'm pretty sure I can remove the pan from this yeah, I can remove the pan from this. There's like that little 
button back there and then I'm going to clean it up because this guy is kind of gross and then I'm going to just keep this in my collection. It does not take up a lot of space. It just it's a square pan and it's fairly slim. So if I ever want to purchase a pan product in the future, I think this is a pretty standard size for a blush or a bronzer, that kind of thing. Um, so I'll have this if I ever want to make a purchase from a brand that sells singles and then I can put it in here. So I'm okay keeping this product for like literally a decade because it really does not take up any room. And I would rather kind of be prepared to, I would rather keep this than recycle it and then have to buy another one in the future if I want a single. And that way it also saves packaging. And now I'm gonna talk about the lip products that I finished. The first one is the Glossier Lip Gloss. It's just in the clear color. I have changed my tune about this over the course of 2021 or you know since panning this. I panned this in three months. Um, I think actually two. It went really quick and I did enjoy using a clear gloss or at least trying that out. This one is very gloopy or gloopier than I thought it was and I did know it was gloopy when I made that lip gloss ranking video but I didn't realize how much it would bother me until I use it regularly. It has that like sticky kind of stringy feeling when you when you put your lips together would not repurchase this. I also am not a huge fan of clear gloss. I love a tint. The one I'm wearing right now is the Fenty Glow Gloss and while it's not the most pigmented gloss out there, I like Fussy the best. No, it's Sweet Mouth. I own Sweet Mouth. And that's more clear, more sheer than this one. This one is just a little bit more, it has a little bit more pigment than Sweet Mouth. That was too much. So Sweet Mouth is the sheerer one and I would prefer that with like the slightest hint of pink, a little bit of shimmer over this. And I also like layering that gloss or basically any of my glosses over lipsticks than this one because when you have that gloopy thick gloss, it looks different over other lip products like lip liners and lipsticks than a more uh, sheer and like I don't want to say slippy formula but it's more smooth. I also finished the Kosas Wet Lip Oil in Jellyfish. This is the mini and I didn't realize it until I went to look back into my Sephora cart that I paid $33 for this set of three. So this mini was $10 not worth $10 in my opinion at all. The full size product is $36. I think they're overpriced and I don't like this formula. It dries out my lips when I'm using it all day long. Maybe that's not its intention. I would have a hard time using this like as a regular lip product or keeping it in a purse if I know that multiple applications is going to dry out my lips. It also does not have a long lasting time and it's the product that will fade literally after 30 minutes and so I constantly feel like I need to reapply because it's disappearing and then it dries out my lips so I would say I actively dislike this and would not recommend which is a big shift for me from that lip gloss ranking video <laughs> again my opinion changes about things with more long-term use and also trying out different colors as well so um, I do think I have a bit of a different opinion on the red shade than I do with this one as well as uh, dip that I'm currently using in my project pan. So I'm really happy to get this out and I'm pretty sure I can finish dip either in April or May and then to have two of the three glosses out will just be nice because I don't like the formula. Maybe I just need to update that video with my updated preferences. Uh, but I also haven't purchased any new lip glosses since then, like in any new formulas. So maybe one will come in the future, but I did want to make it known that I don't really like that formula. The last product of the day is the ColourPop Lip Gloss in Fairy Floss. 
Now, I decided to not take the stopper out of this one like I did with Jellyfish because the bottom of this product is old and it has changed color. Kind of like the Marc Jacob, Jacobs gloss that I use at the end of 2020. And so I just don't want to kind of, so I don't want to start putting the stopper in there and getting it all the way to the bottom. Not about that. Um, I may just have a couple of uses, like maybe one or two, like you can see there's just a little bit of product left on there that I'll use up in the next day or so, but not really much more than that. And I didn't want to hang on to this for literally another three months until my next video. And it's the last ColourPop gloss that I own, so I'm happy that it's on its way out. I did also want to make a comment. Um, in my last 100 uses project pan update, one of you commented in the comments or left me a comment that you were surprised and I think felt like I was undervaluing or maybe not being honest about my uses of the product. So I just wanted to update you about that. So on the in that video, I said I used the product 48 times. I have since used it another 20 times as of today. So that's closer to 70 uses. We can just call it even 70. And it did last a little bit longer than I suspected that it would and longer than the uh, previous ColourPop lip gloss that I panned. So I did want to make that known um, in case you were also thinking that or were wondering about the, the ColourPop gloss. That's everything uh, that I finished in the first three months of the year. I do have a couple of things that I'm starting to get to the bottom of for, uh, for the next video. And I really like that last kind of like quarter of a product because I find it so motivating to like get in there and like really know you're about to finish that product. And I hope I'll have another exciting update for you or uh, the next quarter. Let me know your thoughts on any of the products if you have tried them. And I know some of the skincare products, you know, you might have a little bit of a different philosophy with those than I do, which is totally fine. And I would like to hear uh, your thoughts and your philosophies down there. Yours are different than mine. I always love hearing uh, your thoughts, comments, and uh, experiences. Thank you so much for watching, being here today, and I hope to see you again around here soon. Bye.